What is an inner circle anyway? An inner circle refers to a close-knit group of individuals who share a strong bond, trust, and close relationship with a central figure or organization, and its term is often used to describe a select group of trusted friends, advisors, confidants, or key personnel who have privileged access and also influence the decision-making processes. In the context of the Beatles, their inner circle consisted of individuals who were intimately involved in their personal lives, their creative processes, and their business affairs, such as close friends, family members, or trusted associates, who played significant roles in supporting and navigating their careers, as well as shaping their identity, offering a sense of friendship and trust, and contributing to the band's overall success and cultural impact. I've selected 12 individuals who I think played a significant role in the Beatles' lives and ultimate success, but I'm not going to include Jane Asher, Maureen Starkey and Yoko Ono, and here's why. Whilst Jane had a significant impact on Paul's personal life and played a role in his creative journey, she's not typically considered a member of the Beatles' inner circle in the same way as their close friends, trusted associates and key personnel. She didn't have the same level of involvement in the band's creative processes, their business affairs or behind the scene operations as some of the other individuals did. Similarly with Yoko Ono, although she was married to John and had a significant impact on his life and creative work, and while her influence on John's musical direction and artistic experimentation cannot be overlooked, it is important to note that Yoko was not considered a part of the Beatles inner circle and was seen by many as an external force who disrupted the dynamics within the band and contributed to its eventual breakup which is of course a subject of ongoing discussion among fans and scholars. Maureen Starkey was not heavily involved in the band's musical projects, songwriting or management. Her role was more centred on providing personal support to Ringo and enjoying the lifestyle that came with being married to a member of the Beatles. What I've done then is chosen 12 individuals I think were core members of the inner circle, although I'm sure there were a few others. But if I've not included someone, then if you think they should be here, drop me a comment. <laughs> So for the sake of this video then, I'm going to talk about the following characters. Brian Epstein, George Martin, Neil Aspinall, Mal Evans, Derek Taylor, Peter Brown, Tony Bramwell, Klaus Vorman, Billy Preston, Patty Boyd, Cynthia Lennon and Linda Eastman. Brian Epstein. So let's start with Brian. Brian was the Beatles manager and played a crucial role in shaping their early success. He was a trusted confidant and guided the band through their rise to international fame until his tragic death in 1967. He had a passion for music which led him to expand the family business into music retail. He transformed the store into a hub for record enthusiasts hosting live music performances and attracting local musicians and artists. Epstein's keen eye for talent and his dedication to promoting local acts earned him respect within the Liverpool music scene. In November 1961, one Raymond Jones walked into the NEMS shop and asked for a copy of the record My Bonnie. NEMS didn't stock the single, but intrigued, Epstein sought out the band, who were then performing at the Cavern Club. On seeing them live, he was captivated by their energy, talent and potential, and perhaps even their tight trousers. <laughs> Less. In January 1962, he signed a management contract with the band, becoming their official manager and setting in motion their path for international stardom. He worked tirelessly to secure the Beatles a record deal, which of course included the failed Decca auditions, but eventually he managed to land them a contract with Parlophone under the guidance of George Martin. He also played a pivotal role in refining the band's image, overseeing their style and presenting them as a professional and marketable act. He would negotiate lucrative contracts, organize their tours, and managed their business affairs. His managerial skills and belief in the band's potential were instrumental in shaping their career. His unwavering commitment to the Beatles and his dedication to their success remained steadfast throughout their time together. 
His ultimate death left a profound impact on the Beatles and the music industry as a whole, as he was mourned as a visionary manager who played a pivotal role in shaping the band's extraordinary journey. George Martin. George Martin is widely regarded as the fifth Beatle and played a pivotal role in shaping the band's sound and success. Martin worked in various roles within the music industry, including as a producer and arranger for the Parlophone label. By the early 60s, he had established a reputation for classical and comedy recordings. Despite his initial reluctance to work with rock and roll, he recognised the potential in the Beatles and agreed to produce their first single, Love Me Do. Martin's collaboration with the Beatles proved to be a transformative partnership. He embraced their creative vision and contributed significantly to their sound, arrangements and production techniques. Martin's expertise in music theory and his innovative approach to recording brought new dimensions to the Beatles' music. Throughout the band's tenure, Martin worked closely with the Beatles on their albums, refining their sound and experimenting with new recording techniques. He played a crucial role in shaping their sound during the studio sessions, incorporating elements of orchestration, innovative effects and unconventional instrumentation. You can see my video up here for a little more in-depth look at George Martin with the Beatles. His remarkable career and his creative partnership with the Beatles forever solidified his place in music history. Neil Aspinall Neil Aspinall was a childhood friend of the Beatles and served as their road manager and personal assistant. He later became the CEO of Apple Corps. He played a significant role in the Beatles' inner circle and had a long-standing association with the band. He met Paul and George while attending the Liverpool Institute where he became close friends with them. Aspinall initially worked as a driver for the band and assisted with transporting their equipment during their early tours. In 1961 he officially joined the band's organisation as their road manager. He travelled with the band, managing their logistics and ensuring that the shows ran smoothly. His dedication and loyalty to the Beatles earned him their trust and respect. As the Beatles' career progressed, he took on additional responsibilities, including financial management and administrative tasks. He played a crucial role in negotiating contracts, dealing with record companies and overseeing the band's business affairs. He oversaw various projects, including record releases, film productions and the management of Apple's diverse ventures. Throughout his time with the Beatles, he maintained a close friendship with the band members and was a trusted confidant. He witnessed the band's creative evolution, internal dynamics and their eventual breakup in 1970. He played a crucial role in the managing of the band's extensive catalogue and was responsible for protecting their legacy. His contributions to the Beatles' success, both as a trusted friend and as a key figure in the management team, left a permanent mark on their history. Mal Evans Mal Evans was another trusted friend and roadie of the Beatles. He assisted them with their equipment, managed their live shows and even contributed to their studio recordings. He first met the Beatles in the early 60s when he worked as a bouncer at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. The Beatles were impressed by Mal's friendly demeanour and helpful nature and they invited him to become their road manager and assistant. As the Beatles road manager, Evans took care of practical matters such as handling equipment, managing logistics and ensuring that the smooth running of their live shows was carried off. Evans also made notable contributions to the Beatles studio recordings. He was often involved in organising and arranging instruments as well as providing creative input during the production process. Evans is actually credited with playing various percussion instruments on several Beatles tracks, including a tambourine on A Hard Day's Night and the organ on You Won't See Me. Clang, clang, Maxwell, silver, I made sure that John was dead. In addition to his role as a road manager and studio assistant, Evans became a trusted friend of the band members. He was known for his warm personality, loyalty and willingness to go above and beyond to support them. Now, following the band's breakup, Mal worked as a road manager and personal assistant for individual Beatles during their solo careers. 
He briefly worked with George Harrison, helping him to organise the concert for Bangladesh in 1971. He also collaborated with Paul McCartney, accompanying him on his tours and assisting with various projects. While Mal's post-Beatles career did not reach the same level of success, his contributions and loyalty during his time with the Beatles remained significant, and he is remembered as an important figure in the Beatles' history. Excuse me, White Clips of Dover? Thank you. Derek Taylor. Derek Taylor was the Beatles' press officer and publicist. He worked closely with the band during their early years and continued to support them throughout their career, providing valuable media guidance. He first crossed paths with the Beatles in 63 when he was working as a journalist for the music magazine NME. Impressed by his writing skills and deep understanding of the emerging Beatle mania, he was hired as the band's press officer. As the press officer, he played a crucial role in shaping their public image and managing their media relations. He had a keen understanding of the cultural climate of the time and helped the Beatles navigate the rapidly growing popularity and intense media scrutiny that they faced. Taylor's eloquent and insightful writing style made a significant impact on the Beatles' public image. He penned numerous press releases, statements and articles that helped shape the narrative surrounding the band. His words effectively captured the essence of the Beatles' music and personalities, contributing to their enduring appeal. In addition to his work as press officer, Derek Taylor became a trusted friend and confidant of the Beatles. He provided guidance and support during their career, offering advice on various matters and acting as a liaison between the band and the media. After the band's breakup, Taylor continued to work in the music industry and maintained connections with the band members. He briefly served as a publicist for Apple Corps and was involved in various Beatles-related projects. His contribution to the Beatles' success, both as their press officer and as a trusted friend, left a permanent mark on their story. His ability to articulate the band's vision and connect with fans and the media played a crucial role in their long-term legacy. Peter Brown Peter Brown was a close friend of the Beatles and became a key figure in their inner circle. He initially worked for Brian Epstein at his NEMS record shop, and later became Epstein's personal assistant. As the Beatles' success grew, his responsibilities expanded and he became more involved in their business affairs. He worked closely with Brian and after Epstein's death he continued to work with the Beatles and became an integral part of their inner circle. He assisted in the management of Apple Corps, overseeing various ventures such as Apple Records, Apple Boutique and Apple Films. Peter Brown is known for his resourcefulness and problem-solving abilities. He played a key role in negotiating contracts, handling financial transactions, and dealing with the complex business aspects of the Beatles' career. He worked closely with the band members and their families, providing support and assistance throughout their professional endeavours. Peter Brown remained involved in the music industry even after the Beatles disbanded. His contributions to the Beatles' business management and his close relationship with the band members left a lasting impact on their careers and overall trajectory of their success. Tony Bramwell Tony Bramwell was a childhood friend of the Beatles from Liverpool. He worked for Apple Corps and was involved in various projects including film production and artist management. He played a significant role in the Beatles' story as a childhood friend and later as part of their inner circle. Tony grew up in Liverpool alongside the members of the Beatles, particularly Paul McCartney and George Harrison. He attended Dovedale Primary School and the Liverpool Institute, where he became friends with Paul. In the early days of the Beatles' career, Bramwell worked as an assistant to Brian Epstein. He was involved in various aspects of the Beatles' operations, including promotional activities, touring logistics and helping coordinate their performances. He would witness the Beatles rise to fame and was part of the inner circle during their formative years. He was present during the Beatles' legendary performances at the Cavern Club and their early trips to Hamburg. He continued working with Brian Epstein and later became involved in the management of Apple Corps. 
He played a role in the development and management of Apple Records and worked closely with the Beatles and other artists signed to the label. Tony's first-hand experiences and close relationship with the Beatles made him a valuable source of information and anecdotes about the band's history. His perspective adds depth and personal insight into the Beatles' journey from their early days in Liverpool to their international stardom. Klaus Vormann. I like Klaus Vormann. Klaus Vormann was a German artist and musician who became a close friend of the Beatles during their time in Hamburg and he had a close relationship with the band and was considered a member of their inner circle. He first met the Beatles in Hamburg in the early 60s when they were performing at famous clubs like the Indra and the Kaiser Kel. quickly struck up a friendship with the band members, particularly with George Harrison and Stuart Sutcliffe. Vorman's artistic talents and distinctive sense of style caught the attention of the Beatles and he became involved in their projects. He designed the iconic cover art for their album Revolver, which featured his unique black and white collage style and captured the band's evolving psychedelic sound. Klaus remained a close friend and collaborator with the Beatles even after the band's breakup. He continued to work with the individual members on their solo projects including playing bass on solo albums by John and George, as well as other artists over time. For instance, you can hear his unique collaboration as the bassist on Carly Simon's You're So Vain. Klaus came in the first day of the session and, and I was overwhelmed by his appearance. He was just strikingly handsome and he was very, very modest, almost retiring. I don't know whether he had just been been sort of noodling on his bass, but he started playing this little 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 son of a gun. And I said son of a gun in reaction to his playing. It didn't have anything to do with the song. Just he began to play son of a gun. You know, I was so surprised. Son of a gun. That's how we're starting the record. And it led the way for that song to come to life. It turned out to be one of the most famous bass introductions in the history of pop music. His association with the Beatles extended beyond the musical realm. Vorman was often seen accompanying the band members at various events and social gatherings. And this solidified his status as a trusted friend and cherished member of their inner circle. Foreman's enduring friendship with the Beatles and his contributions to their music and visual aesthetics make him an important figure in their story. His artistic talents, musical collaborations and personal connection to the band reflect the depth of his involvement in the Beatles in a circle. Now the journey's over and it's, uh, in a way it's very sad because I love all these people and I want to see them every day, I want to have them in my home, but that can't be. So all I can do now is thank them all. It was a beautiful time. Thank you very much. Is it McCartney Rose? Is that so? Do you, do you invent it? Well, I didn't invent it. <laughs> I was up all night. Mm. Well, they named it after me. Yeah? Great. The people who made and that's uh, Christian. Great, thank you very much. Yes. And this one is for me. That's for you. Ah, that's thank you very you. much. For Dick. And that's for you? And this is for me, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking mine. Okay. See you, Klaus. Thanks, man. Oh, thank you oh. so much. I'm so Love Lovely to see you. Okay. Great. Man. Billy Preston. Billy Preston collaborated with the Beatles on their Let It Be album, as well as contributing on the Abbey Road album. He played keyboards and provided vocals, making significant contributions to their sound. He was considered a member of their inner circle during a specific period of time. Billy first crossed paths with the Beatles in the early 60s when he was a young musician performing in clubs in Hamburg. He caught the attention of the band members with his exceptional keyboard skills and energetic stage presence. Preston was invited by the band to contribute his keyboard talents to the Let It Be sessions, and his soulful playing added a new dimension to the music. 
His most prominent contribution can be heard on tracks like Get Back and Don't Let Me Down. His electric piano and organ playing added distinctive flavour to the songs and brought a fresh dynamic to the band's sound. Beyond his musical contributions, Billy's personality and positive energy made him a much loved figure within the Beatles' inner circle during the Let It Be period. His infectious spirit and his camaraderie helped to ease the tensions that were prevalent within the band at the time. I made a s separate video on Billy Preston, which you can see up here. <laughs> More in-depth look into his involvement with the band. Billy's contributions to the Beatles' music and his close friendship with the band members solidified his place within the inner circle during a crucial period of their career. His talent, positive presence and musical collaboration made him a significant figure in the Beatles' story. Patty Boyd Patty Boyd was married to George Harrison from 1966 to 77. She was an important figure in the Beatles' inner circle and was an inspiration for many of his songs. Patty began her career in the 60s as a fashion model and quickly gained recognition for her striking looks and unique style. She appeared in various fashion magazines and worked with renowned photographers of the time. In 1964, she had a small role in the Beatles' film A Hard Day's Night, where she played a schoolgirl on a train who encounters the band. <laughs> Although her appearance was brief, it marked her introduction to the Beatles and their inner circle. During the filming of A Hard Day's Night, Patty caught the attention of George Harrison. The two began dating, and their relationship quickly grew more serious. They married on January the 21st, 1966, in a ceremony attended by the other Beatles and close friends. Patty's relationship with George had a profound influence on his songwriting. Several of his iconic songs were inspired by their love, including Something, I Need You, and For You Blue. Patty's presence in George Harrison's life and their shared experiences contributed to the emotional depth and personal nature of these compositions. Despite their romantic connection, Patty's marriage to George faced challenges. The pressure of George's fame, combined with the band's hectic schedule and personal issues, put strain on their relationship. They eventually divorced in 77 after years of difficulties. Now, following her divorce from George, Patty remarried in 89, this time to Eric Clapton, which further solidified her influence as a muse and her connections to two iconic musicians have made her a prominent figure in music history. Her presence in the Beatles in a circle and her impact on their music and personal lives remain significant. Cynthia Lennon Although Cynthia Lennon's role within the Beatles in a circle may be overshadowed by the band's fame, her presence and impact on John's life during their time together shouldn't be underestimated. She provided essential emotional support and inspiration contributing to the overall dynamic within the group and helping to shape John's personal and artistic growth. Cynthia had a significant impact on the Beatles' inner circle during their early years. As John's wife, she provided stability and a sense of normality amidst the whirlwind of fame and success that the band experienced. She provided calm presence in his life and was there for him during his highs and lows. While the Beatles were consistently on the road or in the studio, Cynthia created a stable home environment for John. She managed their household affairs and took care of their son Julian, allowing John to focus on his musical career. Cynthia's artistic sensibilities and passion for art influenced John's own creativity. They met at the Liverpool College of Art and Cynthia's artistic background helped foster a shared appreciation for the arts between them. It's highly likely that her presence in John's life contributed to his exploration of new artistic avenues and experimental approaches to music and songwriting. Cynthia was not only John's wife, but also part of the Beatles' inner circle. She formed friendships with the other members of the band and their partners. Her presence helped foster a sense of friendship and familiarity within the group, particularly during the early years in Liverpool and Hamburg. As John's partner, Cynthia witnessed firsthand the Beatles' spectacular rise to fame. She experienced the band's early performances, their creative processes, and the dynamic within the group. 
Her insights and observations provided a unique perspective on the band's journey, which she later shared in her memoir, A Twist of Lennon. Linda McCartney, Nee Eastman. Linda McCartney had a strong connection to the Beatles as the wife of Paul McCartney and was considered a member of their inner circle. She first met Paul McCartney in 1967 at the Bag and Nails Club in London, where the Beatles were having a launch party for their album, Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. They quickly formed a bond and began dating, eventually getting married in 69. As Paul McCartney's wife, Linda became an integral part of his life, both personally and professionally. She accompanied him on his musical journey and was often seen by his side during Beatles-related events and appearances. Linda had a deep appreciation for music and photography. She documented the Beatles' lives and captured candid moments both on and off stage. Her photographs provided an intimate and personal perspective on the band's experiences and have since become iconic images. After the Beatles' breakup, Linda continued to be an integral part of Paul's musical endeavours. She joined him in Wings and played a significant role in its success with her contributions as a musician, a songwriter and a vocalist. Linda's warm and down-to-earth personality endeared her to the other members of the Beatles as well. She formed close friendships with Ringo, George and their respective spouses. Linda's presence within the Beatles' inner circle was notable for her love and support of Paul and her contributions to his music. Her role as a creative collaborator, friend and partner reflects the depth of her association with the band. Conclusion the members of the Beatles' inner circle were typically involved in various aspects of the band's activities, including songwriting, studio recordings, touring logistics, management, publicity, and other behind-the-scenes operations. These individuals were part of the Beatles' inner circle and had varying degrees of influence on the band's personal and professional lives. I suppose the inner circle is a little like our own personal relationships with friends and family. Many relationships are seasonal and serve a specific purpose in our lives or the lives of those who connect with us during those seasons. And so it was with the Beatles inner circle. Some were there all the time, some at the beginning and some at the end. There may well be other names for consideration to this inner circle that I've missed out or I could possibly have excluded one or two names from my list, <laughs> but there it is. That's how I see it. I'll wrap it up for this one. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed researching it and putting it together. Don't forget to check out my Beatles playlist. I'll put a little picture here, but there'll be a link up there of all my Fab Four related watchable videos that I've made over time. So thanks for watching and bearing with, and you'll see me in another video soon, no doubt. Bye for now.